All right, welcome to our quick lecture on resource depletion. And the slides for this lecture were designed to accompany the book, The Cultural Landscape. I am, of course, Ms. Gall, and I'll be your host for the evening. <clears throat> so um, the first thing we're going to talk about is why are resources being depleted, and then we'll, talk, we'll get into some of the how, and we'll look at um, reserves and, and things like that. So uh, first thing we want to talk about really our whole goal here we're going to talk about energy resources because at the end of the day that's by and large what we're talking about when we're worried about resource depletion um so we talk about energy resources there's really kind of two major sources of energy animate power and inanimate power animate power is um well people are animal power it means it's animated it's alive somehow okay inanimate power are when we use uh, resources that are not alive. So we use plants, um, or I should, uh, we use uh, coal, oil, sorry, plants would not be technically inanimate power, but we use coal, we use natural gas, we use oil, um, and things like that are inanimate power. So um, we've got a real energy demand problem here in the world um, in that we are rapidly using up the available sources of inanimate energy. Okay, so there we have a finite supply. Um, about roughly five sixths of the energy that the world uses right now comes from either coal, natural gas, or oil. So stop and think about that. Okay, three major sources of energy provide roughly five sixths of the world's energy needs. And those resources are finite. That means that they're not renewable. They're limited um, in terms of amounts that we have. There are renewable resources, but those are costly to produce. They're not, um, they're not as constant in terms of the availability. And uh, right now, they're just not economically viable. So we talk about um, energy resources we've got and we're talking about things like coal natural gas oil um, really you could call these geologic resources might be a better way to stop and think about it they fall into two major categories one is what are called proven reserves and that's where we not only know where they are but we know approximately how much is there okay because we've gone through and we've done the drilling we've done the testing and things like that and then we've got potential reserves and potential reserves are are things that we think are there but we haven't drilled the test wells and the like to find out what's actually down there all we know is that when we um, take a look at the ground and we use things like ground penetrating radar that there are some irregularities that match up with what we know or or expect to be um, coal natural gas or oil so going back to though that idea of um, energy and how we use it. So this map right here looks at energy consumption in 2007. So it's actually gone up a little bit since then, I'm sure. Okay, and it's um, million BTU per capita. BTU is a British thermal unit. And it's a pretty standard way to measure energy. Um, and per capita, again, per person. So when you look at most energy use, right up there in the top is the U good old US of A, um, Canada as well, and then also a little bit with some of the um, Nordic countries. Let me see the outside one I think is Norway if I remember correctly it might be Sweden. <clears throat> and then we've got kind of that mid-range that 100 to 299. Um, most of Europe, uh, parts, some parts of Asia, right, Saudi Arabia. To some degree, this makes sense, by the way, when you stop and think about the fact that most of these are also very far north. Um, and northern climates tend to be a little bit cooler, and so they would require more energy for things like heating. It also makes sense when you look at, uh, like, Saudi Arabia or Libya right there, when you stop and think about the fact that they're some of the hottest areas, and so they, require, they use and require their energy for cooling. Okay, so some of this stuff kind of makes sense when you stop and look at it, right? The middle of Africa, not very well developed. They don't use a lot of energy because there's, quite frankly, 
not a lot of transmission systems and things like that to circulate the energy around. Okay, so this kind of makes sense when you, you stop and look at it and you think about it um, in terms of some of the regional issues and also some of the broader global and climate issues. We're going to focus in a little bit more on the U.S. and uh, this particular map looks at, or sorry, graph looks at type of energy use and looks at it across time. Okay, so again, we're looking at BTUs, so same unit we were using before. And you'll notice you start out, it's mostly wood. And then by 1910, nobody's using wood to heat their homes anymore. Right? And pretty much everybody has shifted to coal. And so we use coal to heat homes, we use coal to drive manufacturing and things like that. And a little bit with petroleum starting the 1800s, late 1800s, and then the car gets invented. And around 1930, 1940, cars become super popular, right? And so that's where petroleum starts to come and play in. Um, natural gas is, uh, you find that actually with petroleum reserves, generally speaking. And so it's increasingly going up. And actually, if this graph were to show little more modern data, if I had to guess, I'd say it looks like this is probably 2008-2009 data at the very latest since the book itself was published in 2011. The image is copyrighted 2011. If we were to look at modern data, what you would see with that natural gas is actually um, shooting up because we've inc we're increasingly using natural gas here in the U.S. and we're swapping slowly but surely away from coal and away from um, petroleum. Nuclear power has never really caught on to any large degree here in the U.S. Um, hydropower, so that's basically water power, we use a lot of that here in Washington State, um, is kind of a little bit not as popular though, um, partially because you have to have large rivers that you can dam up. Geothermal power, these are things like um, when you use the Earth's energy to heat and cool uh, water and then use that to heat houses and the like. So you can kind of see how that's shifted and if you look at just the overall total how high it's really gotten especially since about 1950, right? 1950 it kind of just starts peaking way way up and right at the top there you can see where it looks like it might be starting to trend down and actually um, to a large extent we are slowly but surely starting to trend downwards as we become more efficient in the ways that we're doing things and the like. Um, another thing to look at is to look at um, really our most popular form of energy in the world, petroleum. right? And so what this graph looks at is, um, that's, let's see, MB per D million barrels per day. That's what it's got to be. Million barrels per day. So what they're actually pumping. Okay. And um, when we look at our different, we look at capacities and what we know, what's developed, right, what we're developing. What we see is uh, our existing capacities, what we actually have, are really starting to trickle down. We thought they were. And now we're um, developing our existing reserves by and large, and that, by the way, um, if you've heard of fracking, that's a large piece of developing um, existing petroleum reserves, and it's actually driven petroleum um, costs way down because there's been, here in the U.S., at least so much success with uh, developing or getting oil out of, um, out of the ground in that manner. And we've also got, they call it non-conventional oils, so these are the um, the ones that are a lot harder to get to or maybe a little bit um, or there's a lot less of them in an area right and then also we've got um, new discoveries so there's always a possibility that we're going to find new discoveries especially as uh, global warming occurs and we can get better access to areas of the arctic for instance that's one of the big battles over who gets to claim various parts of the arctic is uh, to get access to energy reserves and the like and so if you saw this, what you would actually see with the U.S. is the U.S. for a long time we were one of the top producers and then we, we dropped down quite a bit and now we're way back up 
and driving the prices of oil down just through through our use of technology and the like to get at some of those um, reserves that are already existing. So if we look at coal production, remember coal is another one of our very popular um, energy sources and we look at where in the world do we make the most coal, right? The United States makes a lot of coal and again we're looking at BTUs, okay, so it's British thermal unit, pretty common way of um, of measuring energy and we see a lot in the United States, we see a lot in China, um, largely because these are heavily industrial areas, right? The U.S. relies a lot on coal in, for our production capacity for generating energy and the like and China certainly um, in recent years has relied a lot on coal as they're, they're spreading their energy infrastructure and getting it out into those rural areas. Right? India increasingly is too and this is one of the big debates surrounding climate change is um, whether or not those poor countries and the newly industrializing countries, whether or not they should lay off the technologies um, that have allowed Western Europe and the United States to grow so rich so quickly, when the reality is they're just, these countries are just trying to pull their folks up out of poverty. And so they, their argument is, look, we've got bigger needs and we need to, uh, we need to pull people up out of poverty before we can worry too much about how we're spreading the or how we're, we're getting the energy we're using. Um, we look at fossil fuels and fossil fuels again, uh, oil and natural gas. Okay, and where are those reserves located? Um, and this one in particular we're, we're looking at is crude petroleum production in 2008, same, same measurement, BTU. Um, Russia if you know anything at all about Russia, not surprising, producing a lot. It's actually uh, one of their biggest sources of influence worldwide and in Eastern and Western Europe is the amount of oil and gas that they produce. Saudi Arabia, also not a surprise. Um, but lots and lots of areas have, have crude oil production going on. And so that one's not people make it sound like it's it's reasonably rare but truth be told it's actually not and we're pumping a lot out of the ground as we go um, certainly a lot quicker than we're able to make it so that's been our lecture about energy sources and where to find them um, and where to look for them as long uh, as well as what they are if you have any questions, by all means, please feel free to come see me during class and I'd be delighted to answer whatever questions you have. Thank you very much.